Welcome all the mountain bikers. Nice to have you here at Sick Biker Studio because today we are upgrading our mountain bikes. It is March. I know some of you have already bought a new bike. Some of you will stick to the bikes that have been with you for some months or even years. And if you are on the budget, you may be thinking, how can I improve my bike without spending on it lots of money? So today we are spending just from $10 up to $90 and I will show you that this will really improve your bike. But first I want to mention what we are not going to be doing with our bike. We are not going to follow any trends. So if you are having like 3 by 9 drivetrain, let's say, you're not going to be upgrading to 10 speed. If you have 10 speed, we're not going to be upgrading to 11 speed. We're not gonna search for more travel or less weight on our fork. We don't have the money for that either. Don't look here because I just ran to some boo-boo. And no, we're not gonna even think about upgrading from alloy to carbon. This is cool. And finally, we're not gonna be talking about replacing the saddle on your bike because that's not upgrade in my opinion, it would be personalization. And I wouldn't be able to recommend you something because I don't know your butt. Okay, I know you're really keen now to hear what can you really improve on your bike for 10 to 90 bucks. Let's start. The first upgrade, which is quite cheap and can really improve your bike, would be either using a sealant for your inner tube on the tires or just getting rid of the inner tube and going tubeless. That can really change the game for you. Using the sealant on the inner tube will prevent from those slow leak holes. So thorns wouldn't be any problem anymore for you because sealant does very good job, at least with those. If you're going tubeless, you're gonna spend just a little more bucks and you will be running lower pressure. That means more comfort better traction and no more snake bites on your inner tube. And if you're really hoping to hear that um, we're gonna shave the weight on the bike on this episode when upgrading MTB, that's correct because especially on the quite cheap 29er tires and inner tubes, going tubeless does save some weight. And so this is our MTB upgrade set number one. Starting with just around four bucks, we can buy such a liquid. Uh, this is the sealant we can really use not only for, for fixing flats, but also for preventing uh, flats also for the systems with the inner tube. So just around four bucks, we've got uh, five bucks from Zephal here and over eight bucks Vittoria and Trezado turbo re repair here. So not only for repairing, but the larger uh, liquid uh, bottle we buy, the less we pay per wheel. And for example, this is the Mariposa Cafe Latex. It would cost us around five bucks per uh, two wheels, so per bike to go tubeless. Then we need the rim, uh, the, the tape uh, for our rim, and that's just around eight bucks, right? So five bucks, eight bucks, and then what we need is a special tubeless valves. These are anodized alloy, so they cost uh, 12 bucks, but we can uh, buy them cheaper. So as you can see, we don't have to pay a lot. There are also some tapes you just put on your rim without uh, gluing those uh, with the valves and with the cups this would cost us also also cafe latex from mariposa uh, 22 point something 22.50 uh, i'm i've been using this one it's almost a liter the largest one from stan snow tubes um, going tubeless for all my bikes and my friends bikes and it's just enough so this is this actually comes uh, quite cheap using the uh, largest stan snow tubes uh, rim tape so Preventing from flats, if you really want to have inner tubes, no problem, going tubeless, no problem. And also remember, if you go tubeless, you can still use the inner tubes if you get a flat. Here is the second inexpensive, very important upgrade, your cables and housings. We are talking about upgrading mountain bikes specifically, right? And even though smooth shifting is as important on the road bike as it is on the mountain bike, 
having I would say even better quality uh, of your cables and housings on the mountain bike is important for two reasons. Reason number one is that we do change the gears and the load much more often on the mountain bike than on the road bike. We do it on some steep climbs on slow speed and slow cadence that's why we need even more crisp and, and smooth uh, shifting. And reason number two is that uh, these bikes are much more prone to uh, dirt, sand, uh, just anything that we get uh, on the trail when we ride also in the bad weather. So thinking about having good cables and housings is a great option and it does improve how your bike feels, shifts and so we can really get faster on the trails. And this is our MTB upgrade set number two. And here we can start uh, by spending around eight, ten dollars then maybe twelve dollars, fifteen dollars, uh, twenty dollars and finally just around twenty five dollars. What is the difference? This is always the cheapest option. You go to your local, local store, you say how long um, housing you need or even you already prepare uh, all these pieces and they will just cut it for you. This is the uh, cheapest uh, way to buy a housing. But the cable, do not save money on the cheapest cables. We want our cables to be of course steel but stainless and uh, try to wrap with your fingers uh, on the on the cable and do not buy these which really can can feel the friction on them now if you buy some sets like this one you will get the length of the housing that will just be enough for your both uh, derailers the cables and all the endings uh, or plugs for your uh, both cables and housings this is in my opinion one of the best option for most of us uh, quite good cables, quite quite good housing, still not um, uh, not coated as the Siltec Shimano, which cost 25 bucks. But for these two, I would go and this jack wire also 23 dollars or four. I would go only for some racing machines for just everyday use and some trail riding this would be really good option. Those uh, more expensive sets will give you uh, all the uh, plugs with a special nose uh, and some additional uh, sealing which is really good. You will get some additional stuff like uh, some rubber protection for your frame uh, also some I don't know how to call it some pieces which which uh, will uh, allow you to clamp the housings together and the rubber on your cable so that your your cable will not heat and damage uh, the frame so this is really good this is all sealed up a really good uh, choice but I would say the best for most of us I'm using myself this one and it's not that expensive and it works just fine. The third upgrade. These platform pedals are okay. This will give us quite good grip. You can also mount cages uh, on these. And as a matter of fact, platform pedals are the best ones for technique drills. But if you do like mountain biking, you like some longer rides, you like riding in the technical terrain, try out clipless pedals. These will give you a completely different uh, riding feel. And replacing the platform pedals uh, with the clipless pedals for me years ago was a great upgrade. Yes, this little thing can change a lot in terms of your feelings uh, on the trails. These are the clipless pedals. The problem here is that uh, when purchasing these, you have to purchase also the shoes which will fit the uh, clipless pedals. So I wouldn't go for these, for example, which, is, which are Shimano XT, but some extremely popular like M520 from Shimano or some other brands, but the cheapest ones and some not really expensive uh, shoes which will fit uh, the cleats and this system. It can really change a lot on how you feel uh, riding on the trails. And finally, the fourth way of upgrading our bike still under $90. That would be replacing the square tapered or octaline crankset or system with the two piece system. This frame is cool, it is quite strong, it is stiff, but once you gain power under your legs, 
you will just feel that this is going to be the weakest point of your or part uh, of your bike and this move when you replace this kind of uh, crankset with the two-piece system will open up some new possibilities because now we are having three by nine system and you may think hmm maybe if i already replace the crankset maybe i'll go two by nine or two by ten or maybe even one by i would say why not the one by system you know my opinion about it it has cons and pros but my killer goes uh, on uh, one by ten and it's okay for just everyday uh, mtb riding so at least we're gonna upgrade the octaling or square taper to two-piece system and you decide whether you want to have two by or even one by system here and that's the most expensive upgrade on this episode for our uh, mountain bike and it is the two-piece crankset. This is something that you upgrade, you put it on your bike and you actually feel the difference. $90 it's still not so much with the bottom bracket but you will feel this stuff is stiffer. Of course now, just as I said, uh, you may just think maybe I have a couple of more bucks, maybe I'll go 2x9, two 2x10, by two by maybe I'll go 1x10 so that you can get rid uh, of the front derailleur and maybe change something on your uh, rear wheel in terms of the cassette, but I would definitely recommend trying a two-piece crankset. Now I can just imagine yourselves uh, just planning to spend some more money on your bikes. Don't spend too much money, but with these upgrades you will really have fun. I can promise you that. I've done this many times with my bikes and it just works. So let me know what do you think about these uh, couple of upgrades. And if you do one of those, let us know how do you feel now on your newly upgraded bikes. Thanks for visiting Sick Biker Studio. See you soon.